This is Democracy Now!, democracynow.org, The War and Peace Report. I'm Amy Goodman with Juan Gonzalez. In Iraq, the death toll from Saturday's car bombing in Baghdad has topped 250, making it the deadliest car bombing in that country since the 2003 U.S. invasion. While Iraq is marking a third day of mourning, a long-awaited British inquiry into the Iraq war has just been released, blaming Tony Blair for his role in choosing to invade Iraq. I wanted to turn to former Prime Minister Blair. In November, he told CNN's Fareed Zakaria that there were, quote, elements of truth to the claim that removing Saddam Hussein played a part in the creation of ISIS. When people look at the rise of ISIS, many people point to the invasion of Iraq as the principal cause. What do you say to that? I think there are elements of truth in that, but I think we've, again, got to be extremely careful otherwise when we misunderstand what's going on in Iraq and in Syria today. Of course, you can't say that those of us who removed Saddam in 2003 bear no responsibility for the situation in 2015. Uh, Sami Ramadani, your response uh, to that uh, uh, to that clip and to the recent uh, bombing uh, in Baghdad and the general situation uh, in uh, in Iraq now, uh, 13 years after the uh, the war started. I think I just have to contain my anger, really, because listening to Tony Blair there pontificating about his role in this. Uh, genocidal war uh, makes anybody, anybody, any human being, really, with, with a bit of humanity in them, quite angry. After all this death and destruction, he would be sitting there uh, trying to justify the fact that terrorism was brought into Iraq after 2003. All of these so-called leaders of ISIS—by the way, ISIS was al-Qaeda in Iraq. That was its official name. And Al we know al-Qaeda was founded in, uh, in Afghanistan with the help of the CIA and the support of Britain and, and so on. But, as usual, some of these terrorist organizations that they encourage and arm uh, bite the hand that feeds them occasionally. But that doesn't change the strategic picture. that. Uh, nearly all Iraqis, even, even supporters, some of the supporters of the invasion and occupation, uh, testify to the fact that terrorism was encouraged by the occupation forces, whether uh, of the British or, or American uh, variety. And the multiplicity of these uh, terrorist organizations was also encouraged by the regional powers, Saudis, Qataris, Turkey. They're all close U.S. allies. They funded these organizations. They they supplied them with arms. Turkey gradually became the logistical base of these terrorist uh, organizations. Some 30,000 fighters, according to the United Nations, came from over 80 countries across the world, trained fighters, most of them, uh, from as far as Chechnya and, and Libya and Tunisia and, and Saudi Arabia, of course, and so on. And they were all, uh, uh, as, as The New York Times, as Seymour Hersh, as many other uh, uh, reliable sources have, have, have revealed that the CIA coordinated a lot of this is, uh, f from Turkey. So, to sit down uh, and listen to Tony Blair trying to, uh, uh, to dissociate himself and, uh, and George Bush and the policymakers then of the, of the proliferation of terrorist groups, the murders in, in Iraq, really, Iraqis, if you ask ordinary people, they will tell you we are still at war. The 2003 invasion and occupation of the country has not ended. This terrorism is a continuation of that war. They see these terrorist organizations as an arm of the same invasion and occupation of the country. They are still dividing and ruling. They are still trying to dominate Iraq, because the Iraqi people have a great history of fighting for independence, for progress, for socialism. Sami Ramadani. Even. Uh, and they cannot control the country that easily, and terrorism is serving them. Sami and Tarek Ali, I want to play for you a clip of Donald Trump yesterday in Raleigh, North Carolina, talking about uh, Saddam Hussein. Saddam Hussein was a bad guy, right? He was a bad guy, really bad guy. But you know what he did well? He killed terrorists. He did that so good, they didn't read him the rights. They didn't talk. They were a terrorist. It was over. Today, Iraq is Harvard for terrorism. You want to be a terrorist, you go to Iraq. It's like Harvard. That was Donald Trump yesterday. Um, Tarek Ali, your response. 
Well, I mean, you know, how can one deny the truth of what he's saying? I mean, yesterday, uh, the BBC here showed a photograph, a filmed interview, with a guy who'd helped to bring Saddam Hussein's statue down, which was a staged event, Amy, as you know, uh, immediately after Baghdad was occupied. That guy appeared on the BBC yesterday and said he's ashamed he did that. He wants to apologize for it. He said, Saddam killed members of my family, but life, everyday life in Iraq under him was much better than it is today. Most Iraqis, even if they hated Saddam and suffered, say life was much better under him than it was under the occupation and what's going on today. So Trump is not wrong, and precisely because he is capable of saying things like that, and Clinton isn't, because her uh, consort, as president, was involved in the sanctions against Iraq. Mm -hmm. Madeleine Albright defended the deaths of half a million kids because of the sanctions. So what can one say? And the, the other thing which is worth remembering, they are now all saying they made mistakes in Iraq. They've made the same and even worse mistakes in Libya. They're carrying on with Syria. They're doing nothing to stop the Saudi invasion of Yemen or the Saudi occupation of Bahrain. And then they pretend to be a bit more humble. We won't make the same mistakes again. Well, you are making them, even as the West is watching. We want to bring another guest into this conversation, uh, Sami Ramadani, Iraqi-born lecturer, uh, speaking to us from uh, London, as well as the well-known uh, British-Pakistani author, commentator, uh, editor of New Left Review, Tarek Ali. 